Hey guys, we're going to go over some basics about cancer in this video, and I wanted to start by referencing this really good book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which some of you have already read excerpts from if you are studying for uh, the focus areas in my class, um, but it's a really important work that focuses on the uh, life of an African, uh, African American woman who had cervical cancer, and her cells were actually taken from her. and basically immortalized to create the first human cell line and her cells still exist today and they've contributed to hundreds of different scientific breakthroughs and research topics but her family had no idea that this was happening and that her cells were still living so I really encourage you to check out the book if you want to read it or read an excerpt from it so let's talk about why we care about cancer it's actually the second leading cause of death in the U.S. behind heart disease, and over 560,000 Americans are expected to die from cancer this year. Um, there's a huge economic impact associated with that, and actually if you make the uh, age range from 18 to 65, so 18-year-olds to 65-year-olds, um, it's actually the leading cause of death in the U.S. So it's something that we really are seeing a lot of, and we're looking at ways we can stop it. So cancer, in a nutshell, is unregulated cell division. It's our own cells that are dividing too much. So let's talk about some cancer vocab real quick. A tumor is a mass of uncontrollably dividing cells with no purpose. And it can lead to um, the rest of your body's organs functioning incorrectly and uh, end up killing you slowly. Something that's benign is a non-cancerous tumor. It's not going to invade other tissues and it's uh, not really going to uh, hurt you too much. But a malignant, that is a cancerous tumor and it does invade other tissues. And metastasis is when a cancer cell enters the bloodstream and travels to other tissues. And this is the true danger with a lot of cancers is that it can spread very rapidly throughout the body. So here again are those definitions if you wanted to pause and jot those down. Now cell division, which we've talked about already, um, is just one part of the cell cycle. So the cell goes through all these different stages in its life cycle, and most of its life it spends an interphase composed of G1, S, and G2. So go back and watch the mitosis video if you need to get caught up on that and the cell cycle video. Now mitosis comes after our interphase, and um, what happens in cancer is that we have some misregulation of this cell cycle. So cells normally are going to divide at certain times when they're supposed to as part of uh, being a living organism but there are checkpoints within the cell that allow it to pass from stage to stage in the cell cycle and if the cell doesn't have everything right in those uh, in those different stages then it won't pass the checkpoint and the cell will actually um, either stop dividing or there are certain signals in the cell that can tell it to commit cell suicide and the cell will destroy itself or kill itself or uh, do a process called apoptosis but in cancer, cells are going to divide when they're not supposed to, and or cells are dividing in a place they're not supposed to. And we need to understand how the cell is coordinating this process, and through that understanding we can help find different cancer treatments like chemotherapy. Now, Cancer is a genetic disease, meaning that it's caused by mutations in your genome. Um, but a lot of cancers have several different genes that are mutated. But it's not a hereditary disease, meaning we don't really pass cancer on to our offspring, and cancer is not contagious either. But we can inherit what's called a disposition or a susceptibility to cancer. So you are more likely to get a certain type of cancer if you inherit a certain type of gene from your mother or your father. A very common one is BRCA1, which is a cancer mutation that is going to lead to. So let's talk about the genes that are involved in cancer. Um, we can often call these cells gas and breaks. Um, we have something called an oncogene, and that's a gene that when it's mutated it can gain a function or express at abnormally high levels, and as a result is going to contribute to a normal cell converting into a cancer cell. Um, this is often going to cause an increase in what we call transcription of the gene through things called kinases. Now, um, proteins that act in this way are going to be called transcription factors, which we'll talk about much later. But just know that oncogenes are something that can gain a function and cause these problems to happen. A tumor suppressor gene is going to encode for a protein that's already involved in suppressing cell division, so something like p53 or other checkpoint proteins. When it's mutated, it's no longer functional, and then the cell is going to keep dividing um, when it shouldn't because that gene is supposed to cause it to not divide. Um, another thing that we're going to talk about is angiogenesis, and these are tumors 
uh, when tumors send chemical signals that can cause blood vessels to grow towards the tumor because their tumor needs a large supply of blood to continue to grow. Um, and then there's also density dependent inhibition. And this is when normal cells are going to grow to a certain density, um, usually just enough to cover one surface layer. But cancer cells do not demonstrate density dependent inhibition. They're going to keep growing even though there's too many of them already there. Um, so we look here at different stages of our tumors and we can see sort of this angiogenesis. We have um, these blood vessels that are growing towards the tumor basically to feed the tumor and give it the materials it needs. So here's a variety of different cancer treatments and two different cancer tre treatments are going to are going to target different parts of cancer. So surgery be one thing, that's a removal of cancer tissue and possibly the surrounding tissues or the entire organ. There's also radiation which is uh, going to be used in gamma or x-rays to shrink the cells by damaging their DNA and there's chemotherapy which you've probably heard of and these are drugs that target and kill cells that rapidly divide um, as well as other body cells that rapidly divide. So these are things that are like hair follicles or cells lining the digestive system. And so people on chemotherapy generally get very, very sick. Finally, a bone marrow transplant is going to be used to replenish the body with healthy cells after chemotherapy and after radiation. So, so there's some other things you can do when you are finished with regular cancer treatments.